You are about to enter into a new world of knowledge, curiosities, and high strangeness. This is a podcast of Straight Up Strange Productions. This episode is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. Become a patron today at patreon.com forward slash into the portal. Into the portal. I'm Amber A. And I'm Andrew McKay. And we're here with another Film Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty excited about this one. We had it recommended um, from a coworker. So shout out to, uh, to Ryan. Yeah. This was really cool because initially she brought up the simple fact of the history that this movie is based on. And then we discovered this because it was on Netflix, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Super convenient <laughs> for sure. So we're talking about the Winchester movie. Yeah. It's just called Winchester, right? Yeah. Winchester. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. At first I thought it was the Winchester, but yeah, Winchester, because it's obviously not just about the house, but about the family itself, mm-hmm. which is obviously why they went with just the single, the single word title. Yep. But before we jump right into it, I have a tiny, tiny bit of housekeeping. We haven't checked in on reviews for a little while. And I just had a quick peek over on the American iTunes. I didn't check uh, Canada or other ones yet, but we just, we haven't, we, we've been super busy this summer. We, it kind of just slipped our minds, but we still really appreciate it. And definitely like, you know, it's, it's back there. We, it, it back to the forefront of my mind. So I was looking into it. Big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much to everyone who has left us a review. Um, there was actually a couple, a, eh? Yeah. There's actually a pretty decent list and I'm sure there's a few others around the world as well on the other iTunes feeds and stuff. So Thank you so much to all of you. You know who you are. Yes, thank and, you. Um, just, you know, if you guys haven't had a chance to leave a review yet and you do like the show, hop over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes, click those five stars, leave us a written review if you have a second, you you want to say something about the show, or if you liked an episode or whatever. It really helps us out. It helps other people find us on iTunes and mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts. So, yeah. As well, you can click that subscribe button oh, if yes. you haven't already. Please, indeed. Mm-hmm. Indeed, click subscribe. <laughs> That's right. And tell your friends. Uh, also, uh, we have a couple new Patreons up. They were slightly late, so they are from last month, and we've got a few cooking in the works here for you guys, but they're super cool. So we covered Bob Lazar and Area 51, so that was really fun. And mm-hmm. also, we talked about a strange little case called The Weber. That was really cool, because I initially, that's a U, or not a UFO. <laughs> It could have come from one. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But it was a Canadian folklore tale from the East Coast, uh, Newfoundland. And I thought it was really cool. My mom ended up picking up this book um, when she was over in that neck of the woods when uh, she was visiting this last summer. And Super so, cool. yeah, it's been a really fun read. And so look forward to more of those kind of being peppered in along the way because there is a lot of cool content coming from uh, the Maritimes for oh, sure. Oh, yes. Lots of history, lots of weird stuff. Super weird stuff going on out there. So, yeah, those are up on Patreon. So you guys can hop on over there, patreon.com forward slash into the portal and check out what we have. It's pretty dope. We added a new tier a little while ago too, the Cryptid Seeker. So three bucks a month, you get a bunch of sweet stuff and it just really helps us out. You guys keep the lights on. So check it out. That's about it. Other than definitely check out Straight Up Strange Productions, which we definitely do not say enough. Our amazing family over there. Uh, yeah. We should say more often considering we uh, started the network. Um, <laughs> so Straight Up Strange Productions Podcast Network. Uh, so many things cooking. Stay tuned. I'm not going to say too, too much, but hop over to straightupstrange.com and definitely check that out. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And right now it's bare bones, but we're going to get a lot more coming down the pipe real quick here. So it's yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be sweet. Could we be more elusive right now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's get into it then because a yeah. uh, little bit of housekeeping there, but we really, really, really want to get into this movie because it was so fascinating. I think, and yeah. now I just want to go to San Jose and visit this house. So badly. Because it's active and you can go, you can buy tickets. What was it, the Unhinged thing? They've got an event going on real quick. Yeah. And it's like... 40 bucks a ticket or something it's like they're horror it's like really obviously we're heading into mm-hmm. halloween season it is like oriented toward horror we gotta go very interactive they also do like really interesting like like flashlight tours and stuff like that what? creepy man we should totally get kevin and tiffany shout out to doodle kev check him out on instagram to go check it out because they live pretty close i think uh, that would be fun yeah for sure yeah. definitely they can, they can be send our, us pictures our correspondence we oh, 
That's something we've talked about. That's another fun thing for another day. Anyway, mm-hmm. okay. But getting into it, though, this is kind of our, our lead up, right? Because we're heading into Halloween season and we want to get into... Obviously, we cover weird stuff all the time on the Film Fridays, but this is a little bit more horror-oriented. And so, yeah, this was a 2018 flick. Awesome. It was directed by the Spearbig brothers. Spearig, sorry. Mm. <laughs> the Spearbig? I don't it's, know. What you say for that? It's like, almost like, what, the poor man Spielberg? Spielberg, Spearbig? Mm. <laughs> I didn't. Well. <laughs> I just slipped out. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's an Australian flick. Um, it was produced in Australia, at least. Right. Um, Australian Houses of Production. It stars... Obvi- Helen Mirren, she's a gem. Obviously, the, she does a really she's good awesome. job in this one. And yeah. She's very, uh, very well collected. Like, I don't know. She just, I liked her in this yeah, one. Yeah, she's. She played the role well. She did. Yeah, she did a good job. For and sure. then we also have Sarah Snook. That's uh, Miriam Winchester, her niece, who's currently lived. Well, when the story picks up, she's living with her at the house. Right. And then as well, we do have Jason Clark, another Australian actor, Dr. Eric Price. He's great. He, Yeah, he was great. I and love he, that guy. He's one of those guys where you like see him and you're like, I've seen you in a bunch of stuff, but I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, he's in tons of movies. Yeah. Tons of movies. Yeah. And then I threw this one in here too. There's a lot more cast obviously but m wiseman played his kind of love in dead love interest uh nancy and okay, that was okay. kind of that was pivotal to the plot and you don't even really realize it until closer to the end right and and you kind of piece it all together and everything becomes a lot more significant we watched this movie a couple times obviously in preparation for this uh recording and so we would recommend um either watching it closely or watching it a couple times because there's there's stuff that i missed the first time around yeah like it's not an overly complicated movie but there's definitely obviously you know mm-hmm. there's going to be things you miss and there were for sure definitely you pointed out a few things and i was like oh yeah, yeah. i caught that there's lots of foreshadowing looking at you it. out of the corner of my yeah Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a good one, though. Um, so let's get into it. I liked this. I, I pulled this out from IMBD, and this was just a, you know, their brief, brief synopsis. It basically says here, quote, ensconced in her sprawling California mansion, eccentric firearm Harris, Sarah Winchester, believes she is haunted by the souls of people killed by the Winchester repeating rifle end quote hmm. so that's very brief obviously and it, it does sum up the movie essentially but there's a lot more going on right and um i didn't really want to like i started i always do this when i start to write out a synopsis and they're like okay let's do plot notes whatever and then i get way too detailed and everything so that's i just i started it out and essentially what we pick off with here is the winchester house we see it at night right all you hear at first is what you see is the outside of the home you hear hammers you hear like you know construction noises yeah of course and it's just going on and it's a constant thing and they definitely make a point of that right off the bat with this and they really want to focus on the house which i appreciated right they're not going into mindless stupid character details like before that they get right into the coolness of this plot Oh, and they sure do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. With this little kid. The kid especially, right? Like, because he is basically the conduit through which this spirit that becomes more and more malevolent and more and more destructive over the course of the movie. Right. Um, but yeah, we basically get Miriam's boy. So basically the setup here is that when Mrs. Winchester is living by herself, right? She's already a widow. She's been a widow for many, many years. Yeah. And she has her niece, Miriam, who's living with her along with her young son because of the fact that her husband died, right? Of alcoholism or whatever. They kind of just allude to that. Yeah. And it might have been of some kind of consumption. Yeah. It might have been violent, right? Because they say that the boy witnessed it. So I'm like, what did he witness exactly? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, was it? Yeah. Was it, was it another like death by Winchester? Like that would have been a little on the nose maybe, but I don't know. They didn't, I liked how it wasn't that on the nose though, right? Right. They kind of just leave it open. Mm -hmm. And, but that's kind of what we come across is them in bed at night while construction's going on, right? How would you be able to sleep? I guess it's a huge house. It becomes white noise at some point, I guess. Actually, yeah, maybe. Yeah. We like, we like white noise. Yeah. Yeah. Saws and hammers, not so sure. Haven't tried that. (laughs) Rainfall, thunderstorms are nice. Yeah. Beach waves are nice. Yelling construction workers. <laughs> <laughs> you sexy little bob builder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What is that reference for all to? The Kenny Schmidt fans out there. <laughs> Good old Titus. Love that guy. But it's crazy, right? Because it's creepy. You get the boy basically coming out of bed. He's seemingly possessed. His mom finds him on the stairs leading up to the, the room that basically becomes the centerpiece in the finale, like the climax of the film. Right. And what does he say again? He's like, 
they're coming or something uh, like that. He's coming for us. He's coming for us. Oh, and, okay, you yeah. know, I just got to say that, like, he was a, that that kid. What, what was the name of this kid? Do we even have that? Not Mm-mm. important. It's just the kid. Because, I mean, yeah. really picked a good one because, like, short kid with red hair, bowl cut in a nightgown, like, doesn't stand a chance. You just don't stand no. a chance against demonic <laughs> spirits and entities. <laughs> no. I mean, there is no better vessel than that kid and that face. What about the hereditary the, kid? I feel like that was better. Yeah. That was freaky, man. Yeah, in a different way, though. Like, this kid's just like, oh, you're hopeless. Well, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he basically was. He didn't really say or do much besides play with his toys at the dinner table at one scene. And then he's basically just like the conduit. He was oblivious the, the entire time. I don't even think he knew what happened at all. After everything, after every instance where that kid was like possessed, the look on his face was kind of just like, oh, it was like the look your mom gets sometimes when she's kind of like, doesn't know what's going on. She's just like, just looking around like, I was dazed and confused. Very mm. much. So everyone was confused in that night. <laughs> I really liked how they did this really quick transition, right? From that scene where you get the flash, you get the, the ominous sign, you know, this things to come, right? Yeah. And, um, and then it, and then pans really quickly over to a very different scene where, you know, you get the late night, uh, provocative scene of laudanum, scantily clad women and right. this professor mm-hmm. who's on hiatus or on sabbatical or whatever you want to call it, imbibing in the laudanum as well. Living it up. Living it up. Trying to be a real cool dude, right? With this stupid like illusion thing that he did for her and she was all impressed. And then later he tries to use the same trick on Helen Miram or Mrs. Winchester. And she's just like, stop it with your parlor tricks. Like, Yeah, no. well, she's not a prostitute, so. Exactly. A easy, little easier <laughs> to pull one over. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but yeah. <laughs> so here he is living an empty hollow life, comes into, well, he, what is he? Like he hears the doorbell ring or something. Kind of a weird late call. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's kind of late to come asking someone to come do a, an evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think? It's odd. Like he, he kind of squints his eyes after the girls leave and is all confused or whatever. And he's like, what do you want a prescription? And he was just like annoyed. And confused. Mm-hmm. I'm and on then, sabbatical is what he said. I'm on yeah. sabbatical. To like basically get the hell out of here. Um, obviously quickly realizes that, I mean, obviously these people did their research, right? Like they know that he has consumption is- issues probably, like that he's addicted to things, that he needs money. They looked into his past at the hospital. They knew he had debts, not like massive ones, but they showed up and said, hey, what's up? We'll double it. That's true. They want to entice him. It was because, like a flight of the Concord situation. Well, we'll double it. He didn't even know what it was. We'll double it. Double it. <laughs> Excuse me. But the thing is, it was Mrs. Winchester that hired him. Exactly. Because which we she find out. because she knew. Mm-hmm. She knew. Mm-hmm. And the creepy part about like when he first arrives on the property and you get that scene where he comes out of the little carriage and um you know, he's kind of doing a survey and he talks to like the foreman guy or whatever, like the I don't know what he would be, like the contractor. <clears throat> And he talks about how, like, you know, the contractor is trying to, like, normalize the situation. Like, oh, you know, constant construction, a lot of things are moving and changing parts, and a lot of things get torn down and rebuilt and la la la. And he points over to this kind of decrepit-looking garden room, and he's like, that probably won't last the summer. And, you know, and, and then that room becomes very critical to his, like, Dr. Price's, which is the main character, right. like, to his self-realization, to the reason why he's essentially there the yeah. whole time. And Mrs. Winchester, I guess, has already seen it yeah, to a certain Yeah, she did, degree. of course. Mm-hmm. And there was foreshadowing even before that, right? Because when, do- yeah. when the guy shows up to hire him, he goes into the house and there's this essentially like an atrium inside the doctor's house, yeah. which is like, okay, sure. You're got a little bit of money. You're living in San Francisco. There's going to be some mm-hmm. tropical plants and stuff, but it was very specific. It and was. we find out later that that was important, obviously. And he kind of looks around too. the guy that the lawyer guy that was from the Yeah, company. like, Oh, what am I doing here? What, like, what's this about? And then yeah. also even before that, right. When he's taking the laudanum, he's with the prostitute. And then he looks over at the buck. And the buck starts bleeding. It's like a painting of a buck. And then the buck is very symbolic, right? Because it's on the Winchester rifle. Yeah, or at least it is it on all of them or was it it's just on the, on the one? Yeah. It, I don't know if it's on all of them, but it was on the main weapon that that guy used to right. kill a bunch of people who ends up becoming the main demonic of course. spirit figure thing. So like, okay, so so Price, Dr. Price is in the house. They take away his laudanum. Because she knows, I guess. I mean, she can see it or sense it or whatever. Smell it. Like the the niece is already, yeah, smell it, I guess. Like I the niece know. is can already saying it? like, don't, 
like don't drink before dinner and all this kind of stuff. Right? And she's looking him up and down. She's like, you know, my aunt sense of smell is as, as keen as mine. So respect her wishes because she right. can obviously smell it on him already too. Yeah. And he's already been imbibing. <laughs> Hardcore. He's a smooth talker. And I, I love his little scene, right? His little, as soon as he's alone in the room, and of course he gets out the laudanum and starts to, you know, give himself his own sort of self loathing, uh, what do you call it, like a monologue where he's just like, yeah. well, he's not a monologuing because he's essentially talking to um, his ex lover, well, not ex lover, but the lover, Nancy, that died. And um, is that what her name was? Nancy. For some yeah. Reason I thought her name was something else. No, I think it's I Nancy. It was Julia for some reason. No, the the IMBD said Nancy. So if they're wrong, Nancy. then I'm wrong. Well, and I'm sorry for all y'all. Here we but. <laughs> his, his, his dead wife, right? Like, Yeah, not his wife. It was like his girlfriend, I think. I don't think they were no, married. it was his wife. I don't think they were married. There was no wedding rings. There's no nothing like that. The 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 entity refer yeah i mean that, that maybe yeah possibly the entity refers refers to her as his wife like okay. it took your wife because she shot herself in okay. the head with a winchester okay right well maybe that makes yeah sure i don't know anyway it doesn't really matter the sanctity of marriage they clearly were he just a, seems like a <laughs> like, debaucherous fellow and it seemed yeah. like she kind of was too and it, to me to, if i'm being entirely honest i always interpreted that as a perverted um doctor patient relationship that mm-hmm. he he transgressed the boundaries and pursued a personal relationship, because, but that's just my interpretation. Well, let's clarify it because he is a psychiatrist. Yeah, right? like he's so he would have had tons of sessions with her, and then probably led to you know because he even says right, he's like, really "You told me that? I'm a phony, I'm a fake, like I'm a falsity, like yeah, and all but, this stuff." And yeah, okay, we're this is kind of off topic of the movie. We don't need to talk about we're not we're not here to break down that, but but I'm pretty sure it was his wife. Let's just move on. Okay. Let's let's get into some of the haunting stuff because he figures it out relatively quickly, but just blames it on the laudanum. Like he blames it on the laudanum for like the first five sightings. Basically, he he basically the first night. Yeah, he basically wanders out of his room because well he 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 sees stuff right away that are pretty messed up. Like as soon as he gets there, he sits down in the room and that's, stuff starts to flutter around. And well, be that's like weird. yeah, that's what I was getting at because okay. he's doing the monologue right, and he's like basically saying to his ex lover, whatever ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> dead wife <laughs> that he is this phony right that he's like yep i've always been a fraud and like why is why am i here is essentially because i i think that he feels like he's being called out to a certain degree right mm. and then and that's essentially when yeah exactly right the paranormal activity starts yeah so i mean he's <laughs> and he yeah he sees things that he doesn't realize are ghosts. This is something we realize later on in the movie, but he sees like house workers that aren't actually house workers, mm-hmm. right? At the very beginning. He wanders out of the house after the niece tells him about the the pipes, right? That's his first mm-hmm. thing that gets him to leave the house. So yeah. he has there's this uh communication system in his room that connects to the garden room, which is obviously significant, and that ends up being one where he hears a whistle, mm-hmm. which is super creepy. Because it's like the garden room is connected to his past lover right but then there's that creepy finger that comes out like that's not her no or was that out of a different hole was that like an adjacent hole no because he was listening into the garden right creepy though Mm -hmm. that was like the other entity because this house is full full of them right yeah so okay i mean i I, maybe i'm just my mind is racing a little bit but that's the thing right because this whole the thing is about this movie is has a very smooth plot transition and very smooth um, scene changes and the essentially yeah like I, I loved how it flowed and how essentially that scene right that takes him outside essentially leads to another scene right where he essentially saves the boy from falling to his death because he's possessed and la 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 and so that was another another aspect of the Winchester curse and so that's essentially what we're getting into is the fact that this family is cursed the fact that Helen Miriam slash Mrs. Winchester realizes this and is trying to deal with it and she has to a certain degree maintained order right and the way that she does it is by communicating with these spirits almost like figuring out like how did she really phrase it like figuring out spaces for them well she called it know? the house that spirits built and yeah, she basically yeah. she she was a she was a vessel the same as her uh her nephew right mm-hmm. but 
in a more positive way, I suppose you would say, because she got to sit at a drafting desk and draw plans. Or more active, right? More of like an agent as opposed to like a passive vessel. But this is the interesting thing about this because it's like, it, this is all based on real events, people, right? Like you've seen the movie, we hope, if you're listening to this episode, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like these spirits clearly wanted her to do this and this is the purpose for the construction of this massive house which started as yeah. literally just a, a classic you know country estate essentially mm-hmm. like a typical house that we would see here in the Okanagan out in East Kelowna from the you know from the early turn of the century right yeah yeah and why it's so nonsensical right and they never actually allude to in the movie why sh- there's no architect <laughs> there no, never was not no. in real life not in there, the movie. there's a general contractor but there's no architect They've just got a guy working and he's just making it happen off of her drawings, Yeah, which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. What a job, right? And they were also touchy at the beginning when Price is there because they just think he's there to get her the heck out of there. So he's like, oh, this must be pretty awesome to have all this ongoing work. And he's like, looks at him all, you know, squinty eyed Mm -hmm. and being like, yeah, we're all very thankful, like piss off basically. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 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 Well... Do you want to get into like the climax of the finish of the movie or do you want to get into more of the history of the house? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's touch a tiny bit on some of the history of the house, I guess, and then maybe go through. Yeah, like we'll talk about some of our favorite moments that spooked us maybe and stuff like that. So, I mean, you did a little bit more background into the house itself. Let's maybe jump into that. All righty. Well, like we said before, um... This house obviously didn't start as any sort of sprawling, nonsensical mansion. It was like a two-story farmhouse out in San Jose. And basically, after Mrs. Winchester bought it in, was it, 18... Oh, shoot. I have the I have the date down here. But she essentially bought it in the 1880s, I believe. 1884, perhaps? That sounds right. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier. Because she married into the family, right? Yeah, and 1886. Then... Sorry, not 84. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. But this was all kind of the thing is about mrs winchester is that obviously there's a lot of rumors swirling she was very eccentric very like you know um closed off figure and a lot of people believe that the her grief over the death of her young infant daughter that was like five and a half weeks old died of marmas marasmus or whatever it's called and which is like a disease i've never heard of but essentially the body wastes away it's pretty and weird it's crazy i know right pretty gnarly And so after that, and after the death of her husband, uh, suddenly of tuberculosis, she basically, she was kind of like, I don't know, she was losing a little bit, I guess. Like, how would you not? And so she packed up her bags, went to San Jose. Many believe it was at the advice of a medium who basically influenced her into believing that her family was cursed and that her fortune was cursed and that, you know, like essentially she's imprisoned by it to a certain degree and her life kind of took a huge turn after that right because she basically that was her life's work like she was yeah. convinced of the evils of the winchester repeating rifle she didn't really believe in it she wanted them to diversify their portfolio into roller skates among other things which they obviously touch on in the movie they do yeah mm-hmm. so she's a very determined woman in that degree or in that sense of the word but I don't know, like, this is a fun quote from the winchestermysteryhouse.com, and they go through, like, a full history of everything. But they say here, Sarah Winchester was a woman of independence, drive, and courage who lives on in legend. The mansion she built is world-renowned as much for the many design curiosities and innovations, quote, or sorry, brackets, many ahead of her time, and bracket, and it is for the reported paranormal activity that reside within these walls. So there's a lot of things going on here. And the fact that she never used an architect and that they, yeah, they allude in the, well, don't allude, they basically say that it was the spirits talking to her, which a lot of people probably thought too at the time. And perhaps that was the case. <laughs> it definitely could have been. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we would have to dig real deep and go back and try to find out like who this medium was and like try to trace that a little bit and like get a little bit more context there to see Mm -hmm. what really prompted some of this or if it was more gradual and genuine because that's the thing too i don't think it was i don't think that sarah winchester was the type that would be influenced severely by a charlatan like at the drop of a hat yeah yeah exactly like i think that she did have a genuine belief in a call to the afterlife and spiritual beings as many wealthy you know people who don't have a ton of next of kin do in a way they're into those Mm -hmm. types of things yeah 
But I mean, I'm buying it kind of, and I really <laughs> want to go there to see if I can experience anything. I mean, you pulled up that one interesting thing this morning. You mentioned that Harry Houdini went and spent a night there mm. or something like that back in the day. And he was a renowned paranormal critic. He yes. wanted to just dis- like, he basically tried to go to as much seances as he possibly could and try to like denounce these people. And the quote was, he left with more questions than answers. And this is interesting. Which, too. which is an interesting thing to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's get into a little description of the house here. Sure. Like this is just uh, this is a Wikipedia quote, but okay. it's kind of funny. It just says here, the home contains numerous oddities, such as doors and stairs that go nowhere, windows overlooking other rooms, and stairs with odd sized risers. Many accounts attribute these oddities to her belief in ghosts, like Mrs. Winchester. Environmental psychologists have theorized that the odd layout itself contributes to the feeling of the house being haunted today, which definitely would be an eerie thing, right? If you see staircases leading up to a ceiling or you open a door and there's nothing but three stories down <laughs> or you know what I mean? Like uh, this was fun yeah, too. Definitely. More going into this specific description of the house. Pretty crazy. So 24,000 square feet, <laughs> 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors. Can you imagine? <laughs> we have what? How many doors? 10 in our house? Maybe? Oh, not not even. even. Six? One, two, three, it had 52 seven. skylights, 160 rooms, uh, 47 cases of uh, stairways and fireplaces. 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, one of which was actually equipped with a window in her later years so that a nurse could check on her because she was very independent, but she, she definitely needed a little help. Yeah. But um, essentially, the, the last point here is it, it was built at a price tag of $5 million in uh, equivalent dollars of 1923 or what would be $71 million today. Hmm. So she spent a lot of money on this thing. Decent chunk of change for sure. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. The interesting part, too, is like on the website, on the timeline of the Winchester Mystery House, they refer to it as uh, Yanata Villa. I don't know if I'm saying mm. that wrong. Lanata Villa. But there's two, the two L's, so I would imagine it. They're silent. Lanata Villa. Why? Or Villa? I guess Villa wouldn't be. Lanata Villa? I don't, I don't know. know. classic (laughs) mispronunciation (laughs) conundrum for into the portal (laughs) we always just chuck a monkey wrench in there for ourselves for no apparent reason (laughs) whatever (laughs) it wouldn't be a signature film friday if we didn't but i thought that was interesting because it was all referring to oh they moved from lanata villa and blah 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 and all stuff and then it didn't become the winchester mystery house until it was like commercialized yeah it says on their website that they've been doing tours for like 90-something years now, though. I mean, in 2019, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy. Started in um, 1923. Yikes. Because it was auctioned off in the year of her death in December. And then it was leased out. Yeah, leased out by the Brown family, I think. Hmm. And then they wanted to build a roller coaster. They had all crazy designs and ideas. A but roller coaster. Yeah. It was actually insane. It was like one of the first roller coasters ever, but never went through. So they decided to do tours. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Imagine if it was like a roller coaster through the house. Okay, that would be kind of cool. That would be so cool. Like, like a mouse like a coaster. Ride. Like not like a full A coaster. mouse coaster. Where it's like sure. really like, you know, like a tight corners coaster. and... Yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Not like... What do you think That's of not it? really a coaster. <laughs> That's just a ride. The mouse? Oh my God. What those things t- are scary. I mean, I'm picturing it in my head, but I don't think I've ever actually been on one. Dude, did you ever play Roller Coaster Tycoon? No. What? <laughs> oh my God. Because like that was the one type of coaster where normally if you're building a roller coaster, you would use like at least six spaces to make a curve. But with the mouse coaster, you could do like hairpin curves that were literally like what? two spaces. So you do like a 90 degree turn in like two seconds. That's the, the G factor was intense, man. Yeah, I'd there say. were so many people that would just never line up for it in my games because it was just too <laughs> crazy <laughs> sounds like you were designing some pretty dangerous roller all coasters. the time and then you'd instantly demolish them because and get back the price tag for all the construction and then you just rebuild something crazier people like, know like roller Mr. coaster tycoon Fish from pubs just kick the bolts into the sea you don't need them <laughs> don't need them they're not paying for wood <laughs> no one's paying for extra bolts bob oh, God. but yeah mouse coasters in winchester house would be amazing it's like you know when you're in I'm trying to come up with a reference here, like Disney World. In that would be really cool. Like, Disney well, obviously, World, there's the you know, haunted the tight mansion coasters ride. That, and they're like really steep curve, like drops yeah, and stuff. And sure. Anyways. We need to go back to Disneyland and Disney World. It would be amazing. Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, that'd be sweet. And you'd definitely see some ghosts, I'm sure. 
If they in took Winchester? you through so, okay, here's my question, right? Because there's obviously look, there's so many rooms, like so many rooms. There's got to be more rooms than just these rooms that we don't even know of. That people have like that have literally been like boarded over. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like that were rooms at one point. And there's not even doors to them anymore. Well, what about all these thirteen nails that were referenced in the movie oh, all the time and all let's these talk closed about off? That for a second. What what's the deal with thirteen nails? I'm not sure. You know what I wanted to mention too? The thirteen well, thirteen nails. Thirteen is very symbolic for a lot of reasons that I <laughs> can't bring up off the top of my head. Because <laughs> yeah. you're throwing it out there. Mm. But what I did want to mention too, just going back to the construction. You know what's crazy is the fact that that 1906 earthquake, right? Mm -hmm. That was intense. That happened in real life. It destroyed a lot of real estate. And the Winchester house, actually, it did have a lot of damage. Obviously, they had to destroy um, the tower. There was, I think the fourth floor was, some of it was destroyed too. There were sections that had to be rebuilt. But the fact that this house was built on a floating foundation, which I'd never heard of before. And I'm not in construction, so I don't know if this is really common or not. But essentially, it was, like, like saved by the fact that it can, like, float off of it, and it's not actually attached to the foundation, which is interesting. So yeah. now I'm thinking, like, is there a basement in this house? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. they're, mm. off, they're usually were in these mm. types of houses. It's a Victorian era. We need to book a tour. We need to go yeah, see. Bring a, bring a jackhammer and find out some stuff. I'm just trying to find mm -hmm. out more here on the fly about the 13 nails. Oh, okay. But clearly it's obviously just has something to do with like the occult and like a... Spirits. Know, like, yeah, keeping them in. Because um, that was the funny part too. Because they always... Yeah, they're like, oh, 13 board windows, up the there's doors. There's like this thing here. What's going on? Like, board up the doors. Board up the floors. Like, can't spirits move through floors and windows? Like, Well, that, that's just it. it. Obviously, it's, it, there, there's, there's something... Yeah, there's something that attaches it to, like, the veil between worlds, like, using that symbolic number, mm. right? Those okay. were hardcore-looking nails, too. Those were, like, coffin nails. Yeah, man. they didn't look like Those actual... were not just usual run-of-the-mill hammer-aboard nails. Of course, they got to get gnarly-looking nails for the movie. Well, my, that makes me wonder if they're... Can if, we talk those about... Those are, like, railway-building <laughs> nails. Can we talk about the scene where he takes the nails? Because, like, he's going up to save Mrs. Winchester. This is going... This mm -hmm. is just fast-forwarding to the climax of the movie, where he takes the nails that the slave drops for him on the bottom of the staircase, and that's the staircase that descends up to the ceiling, right? The very symbolic yes. one that we started with at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. And he takes his little tiny hatchet... <laughs> And he like smashes through the floor like four times, which oh, probably yeah. wouldn't even make a dent. And then you see him kind of try and clamber his way, his head, or at least his head, like his shoulders definitely wouldn't fit through that thing or barely would have. And then it changes to a different, <laughs> different camera. It's a much larger then, size. <laughs> I was like, movie magic. Yay. Movie magic. <laughs> that was honestly the only real thing that I like really saw though. Took issue with. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really catch much other than that either, but <laughs> it's yeah. pretty funny though. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I can't so, really find anything here anyway. Okay. But anyways, like the whole, the climax of the scene or the movie, I should say, should we get into that? Yeah. Let's talk about it. So obviously they figure out that there's this, there's only one particularly horrible entity in this house. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are pretty manageable and Sarah seems to be yeah. pretty okay with them, right? She even tells them to go back to their rooms when it's all over. That's the creepy, yeah, and they all slam their doors and whatever and you're like, ooh, this mm. is not an empty house. <laughs> no. This is full. Definitely not empty. Mm -hmm. But there's one in particular that she couldn't quite identify until later on mm -hmm. that we realize that... Uh, yeah, this had, well, just before, well, he's, just before dinner, he sees the, clearly a Civil War soldier, Dr. Price does, in the reflection in his mirror. Yeah. That's the first foreshadow, right? Then mm -hmm. he opens the door without anyone knocking, and one of the servants is there, a young kid, yeah. early 20s, and he's like, oh, dinner's ready in 10. It's, he's very unassuming, and like, there's not, like, when we, the first time we watched it, I didn't think anything of it at all. The second time, it seemed a little, kind of like, you're a little odd, and you have a, deep southern accent it's mm. only 19 oh whatever you, you, no you're, no you're in, it was the 1800s in this movie was it yeah okay so it's well 19 by 1906 is when it was like seven stories and like super 1906 was the earthquake oh and that's when it mm -hmm. came down mm -hmm. anyway i found it peculiar that he had like a southern drawl the second time around hmm. right because obviously we find out that <laughs> The ghost that's super pissed was a Confederate soldier that got 
massacred by the superior Union Army who was using Winchester rifles, Mm -hmm. who then went on a killing rampage at one of the showrooms, like the, the main showroom for the Winchester rifle that had every model. And Mrs. Winchester, I mean... Even the description of the room was like kind of cocky. She was like, we used to call this the show off room. Like she didn't say mm-hmm. it that way, but it's like the name of the room is like, you know, yeah. obviously, I mean, you're, you're trying to say you have the superior weapon, right? Like, why wouldn't you call it that? Yeah. But then he ends up locking himself in there after killing 15 people with a Winchester. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, being just like hail of bullets and just totally massacred by police. Yeah. Who in the report, the first thing they said when she read it was like, you know, didn't stand a chance to like our officers, Winchesters basically was like the first Mm -hmm. line, just this big cyclical irony everywhere. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) yeah, yeah, everybody dies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. That was creepy in that part. And then, okay, wait, uh, now that I'm rethinking this over when they go to the dinner scene, was it him that he refused to serve him wine before supper? Yes. It was. Because he couldn't. Yeah, and he just kind of looks at him like, and you think he's just being a little, you know, following Mrs. Winchester's rules of not drinking before dinner. But, but then does he serve it to him later? They do, I, okay, <laughs> we watched it twice. I'm thinking about it yeah. now. They get served, but I don't even think don't they see, show the face. No, they don't. They Was don't it see. a different server? Like maybe he that's the what the room, and then somebody else yeah. comes in. Well, was it just him in the room though, or was there someone? Else I feel there? like there was another, like a like a woman, like a maid, or was something. There was somebody mm-hmm. else serving food because he was just kicking it. He, More than yeah. one person serves at a mansion like that. Oh, you for get a sure. Fancy dinner. It's not yeah. just one guy. That's why she had thirteen bathrooms. Mm. It's a lot of bathrooms. <laughs> it's a lot of bathrooms, <laughs> and most of them were disconnected after. Like she was dead, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot of plumbing to deal with for sure. So of course. Okay, okay. Where, where do you want to get to here? Where are you at? Well, we're basically at the climax, right? Because we've had this kid being possessed. He's basically, they, they just get to a point where it's a breaking point, right? And the rest of the spirits recognize it. And then also at the same time, you have Price having his realization, the whole thing with his wife and like, and you that know. And he can see everything because he was dead for three minutes. And he was killed with a Winchester rifle. Because she killed him. Because it was this whole thing where he was telling her he had, she had a delusional psychosis. And she was telling him, you need to believe me. Like, I'm seeing all this crazy stuff and blah, 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 blah. And then it came to a point where it was an accident, right? She ends up shooting him in By the accident, chest. Yeah. And then ends up killing herself because she thinks she's killed him. Yes. And then he says to Mrs. Winchester how he was dead for like three minutes. And then he basically took the shell casing that killed him from her and had it engraved with together forever. And had it and refurbished. had it refurbished. So it was an actual bullet again that he just carried around with yeah, him. Yeah, a functioning and that was, bullet. And that was just a very symbolic thing of his guilt. Yeah, And when definitely. he lets it go, right, at the very end, because that's the bullet that kills the, the evil spirit. Yeah. It's uh, it's very symbolic, right? Definitely. And she even says, like, um, objects of death have a strong connection to the afterlife. And that's yeah. what he was, the ghost was afraid of. Yeah. So it's all, I like how they have a lot of neat bows, but not too neat. You know what I mean? Like, No, they made you look a little. Yeah. They made you try a yeah. little bit. Yeah, right? like, we watched it twice, right? And I think I picked up more the second time than the first. Definitely. And yeah, and I just think it, it was a good movie. Yeah. You know... I, yeah, I like the style of it. I like the era. I love period pieces. What did you like most about this? I like that it was, yeah, a period piece and that it was just a fun movie. I didn't really go into it expecting to be scared and I wasn't, right? Like I didn't go into it expecting to be like, this is a no. haunted movie. Like I'm going to get scared, jump out at you. Like it wasn't like that and it no. isn't meant to be. It's just like, a, it's a whimsical haunting is like the best way I would describe it, right? Like it's a very, it's a, it's a whimsical movie is how I would describe it. Like it's whimsical f- with Winchester rifles. <laughs> I wouldn't say isn't. whimsical. Okay, whimsical compared to hereditary or other horror movies and haunting movies that have demonic possession. Like this is, we're dealing with demonic it possession It has a here. different air about well, maybe it. Maybe not demonic, I guess. that's. It has word. a very similar tone to like Crimson Peak kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Where it's just like, Jesus, has this you don't like think that movie's whimsical? The ethereal name Ethereal aura kind of thing. Okay, ethereal, and maybe that's a better word. I wouldn't sure. say whimsical. When I'm describing our Screaming Frenzy wines at work, I say whimsical. <laughs> I don't say that about a Winchester movie. <laughs> whimsical haunting. That's how I'm describing it. I'm rolling with it. 
that's how I feel. About, that's that's how it made me all feel. Right, that's, I didn't, that's you. <laughs> well, I didn't feel f- afraid at all. I mean, it's got Helen Mirren in it, and she's great. She, she, I really enjoyed every actor in this movie, especially Dr. Price. He was really satisfying because it wasn't cheesy. Like, there was moments where it could have been really cheesy, but they just didn't layer it on. Like, it was... Uh, Not like... What was that movie we just watched? And I was like, holy crap. Like, I just saw that ooh, line a mile away. Ooh, which was that? It was a bad, bad, bad. We also watched Ouija recently. That's coming down the pipe for Film Friday. No, no, no. We didn't watch Ouija. We watched Ouija Origins of Evil. Right. Don't get it confused the, with Ouija. But that's the f- the newer one or the older one? It's newer and it's a prequel. Newer and prequel and better and gooder. Most gooder. She's just nodding her head at me, looking at me like. <laughs> just because I told Andrew this twice yesterday. So <laughs> I'm just like, all right. <laughs> all right. So the ending. Well, okay. Well, you just said that the, there's anything that really didn't work for you in this movie or things that really did work for you and you're just like stoked on it. I could have used a little bit more like freaky ghosts, like chasing them around the house. Like yeah. I could have used a few more scares. Like, I guess, like they could have tried a little harder with that. Like a few more of like the creepy guy in the mirror, like they get like, like you get in the room, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more of that before some of like the real realizations. Cause like, he's not that much of a skeptic even like he doesn't even try that hard to not believe. Cause I guess he kind of knows already with like the bleeding painting with the buck and stuff and like everything else, right? I think for him, it's a question of whether it's him or if it's actually happening. (laughs) Right. But then once he sobers up, he's like, oh shit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, This is actually happening. (laughs) Definitely makes you wonder if people who have come back after, you know, being dead for three minutes can have some sort of a potential connection. I think a lot of people who have experienced that would uh, say yes. Yeah. If you're out there and you have, reach out if you feel comfortable. We'd be super curious Mm -hmm. to hear about that. And we're really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this movie i mean do you have any final thoughts any last things to say i i just really appreciated it i liked it i was i enjoyed it like it was something that i can watch again like you know what i mean cool. and that for me a lot of movies this is a movie I'd boring like you know I, what i mean totally. they're just dumb and you're like why am i watching this right now it wasn't dumb yeah agreed okay absolutely and i would recommend it I would recommend and it. And I well. really appreciate Ryan just because she did bring up just the Winchester house in general and how cool it is. And totally. we kind of wanted to like tie this in with a regular episode, but I think we kind of did a, a good job of covering the history in this one too. Yeah. But, but we could get into maybe like more of the ooh, hauntings, like people going back there throughout yeah, the years. Yeah, exactly. Their that type of thing. And if anyone has actually been there on a tour who's listening to this, that would be really cool just to hear about your experience. There's like a wax museum and all kinds of stuff. Hit us up. Mm -hmm. Let us know what's going on if you've been there for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, send us an email too. If you don't feel like, you know, posting on social medias and all that stuff into the portal mailbox at gmail.com and definitely follow us on social media. If you're on Instagram, it's at into the portal podcast. We always have cool stuff like upcoming shows and everything else. So come follow us on there. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. And we have a really cool forum for the strange network, straight up strange podcast network. So it's called the strange room. And it's, it's so a closed cool. group. You just have to answer a couple of cool questions in there. Like what's your favorite monster? I think is one of them and like stuff like that. So go check it out. We have like almost two and a half thousand people in there talking about weird stuff right now. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. So yeah, hit us up. Yeah. So thanks so much for listening guys. And uh, until next time on Into the Portal. You are gateway to the bizarre. This podcast is a part of Straight Up Strange Productions. Discover more shows like this one at straightupstrange.com.